Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama 
together, everybody. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Be trees in Vrindavan. That was their request. So they. They got to take birth as trees. Trees are naked, so they were cursed to be naked. And they got to take birth in Vrindavan for almost 20,000 years. And Mother Yasoda has left Krishna to take care of her chores, and she left Krishna tied to a mortar so that he wouldn't create any more mischief. And now Krishna's looking at the mortar, looking at the rope, and he's never been tied up before, so he's kind of checking out the situation. What am I going to do? And you may remember that Krishna's cowherd boyfriends, which are always there with Krishna, whenever he does anything, they're there. He sent them away because he didn't want them around making noise, because he was going to do something and he didn't want Mother Yasoda to notice. And he also didn't want them participating. So what happened was they were watching from a distance and they couldn't do anything and they couldn't talk. He had an energy on them that was restraining them so they, they just like couldn't do anything. And they couldn't come down and take part in that Leela. So during this whole Leela, they're watching it from a distance. And this Leela begins, and they can see Krishna's thinking. There's a lot of times Krishna's doing mischief, and he's thinking, and you can see a person's thoughts by looking at their face. So it's like, hmm, what am I going to do now? So they're discussing what's he going to do. Like, is he going to untie himself or disobey Mother Yasoda? And... So that's where the class begins, so their, their discussion of what's, what's next, what's, what's up. So um, you know, it's that, it's that same look that he has when he's going to steal butter. So they're thinking, oh, is he going to steal butter? That's one of the things they were thinking. And. Um, And they're saying, no, he can't do that because he's tied to a mortar. All right, so what's he going to do? Is he thinking about how to take revenge on his mother? <laughs> no, but he loves his mother. He wouldn't do that. So they're thinking, what's he going to do? He's going to do something. So it's like, it's like Krishna's pastimes are like a movie. So here's some suspense now. What's the next move? Okay, um, so right at that point, Krishna's mother is left. He's tied to a mortar with a rope, and he's thinking. He's seeing the two trees, and he's remembering Narada Muni had cursed these trees, and he blessed the trees that they would be liberated by me and they would see me. So now he's remembering all this. He's remembered the whole story we talked about last week. That whole story was actually Krishna thinking. And we were just reciting what Krishna was thinking. So now he's thinking, okay, I have to liberate these trees. Okay. Um, hmm. Now, very important point here. We mentioned before that ordinarily there is no reason and there is no way that Nalakuvera and Manigriva would be benedicted to meet Krishna, to live in Vrindavan and meet Krishna and take part in his Leela because they didn't do anything to qualify themselves for it. So generally you have to qualify to enter Krishna's Leela, which is you qualify by achieving the stage of bhava. And then you're transformed, transferred 
into that Leela. Before you go back to Godhead, you're transferred to Krishna Leela. So they weren't in the stage of Baba, so what business did they have in Krishna's Leela? But the very significant point comes up here is that Narada Muni wanted to bless them. And because he wanted that, Krishna, bound by love, was obliged to fulfill his desire, even though these two demigods didn't deserve it. So it wasn't that Krishna thought, I'm not going to fulfill it because they don't deserve it. He thought, Narada Muni is desiring this, so I am bound by his promise, because this is what he wants me to do, so I'm bound to fulfill his promise. And this shows that Krishna is a puppet in the hands of his devotees. Now, this brings up another point, and um, it's a very interesting point, which comes up in the appendix to this chapter. And it is Prabhupada's promise to take a because that also seems like something we don't deserve. 16 rounds. And, um, there's a lecture here quoted in the appendix I want to read. Mm. Well, I don't have a lecture. No, no. Wait, wait, wait. And I have to read this again because they lost it. Yeah, we, it keeps refreshing, and so we keep losing them. Anyway, this class is being recorded. If, if we go off and on, um, if you miss sometimes, it's, re, it's Indian Internet, you know, India... Internet in a village, it's not perfect yet. They're working on it, but... So I'm going to read this again. Now you must agree to very rigidly follow the rules and regulations. That is, chanting 16 rounds of beads daily, rising early, attending Mangala Arti, observing the four principles, attending the classes, eating only Bhagavat Prasadam, and working with my representatives, the GBC and temple authorities, which might be the hardest of all the principles to follow. <coughs> Hare Krishna. And if you follow this procedure very strictly, then your life will be glorious and you will go back home, back to Godhead. Thus, excuse me, this I can guarantee. So, we understand why Prabhupada can guarantee it because if he guarantees it, then Krishna has to guarantee it. And a lot of us think, well, in one life, just doing that, I don't know how Krishna conscious I'll be and I don't know if I deserve it. And Prabhupada's saying, if you do this, we had this discussion, I think, before, whether you deserve it or not, if you do it, Prabhupada's made the guarantee. So now Krishna has to, he can't refuse. As many of you know, it was Prabhupada's desire that we chant 16 rounds. I mean, 64 rounds, but he reduced it to 60, to 16. And some people say that you can't be Krishna conscious or you're fallen if you don't chant 64. But Prabhupada here is saying 16, four principles, following the program, working cooperatively with authorities. And I promise I'll take you back to Gaga. So we should, uh, we should understand that Prabhupada's promise is just like Narada Muni's curse, that now Krishna is obliged. Prabhupada has made this promise in lectures and in writing. That certainly Krishna is obliged to follow. <laughs> so even if you feel unqualified, that's okay. So um, So now, we have to visualize the scene here. Krishna's, there's a rope around the mortar, and then tied to that rope, there's a rope around Krishna's waist. One was a hairband that was tied to Krishna's waist. Madhya said his hairband. And tied to the mortar was the silk rope that they used for churning butter from yogurt. 
That's the rope. That's tying Krishna. So Krishna's like checking it out, and the boys are looking at him. He's crawling around, looking at the rope, and the boys are thinking, "What's up? What's he going to do now?" You know, they're the audience. Um, <laughs> so what Krishna did, the boys are up there, he just turns to them, gives a little nod, and then it's like, okay, yeah, just check out what I'm going to do now. <laughs> That's the idea. Okay. Um, so what would a little boy do who's tied to something? Wouldn't he test to see if he could move it? So that's what Krishna is going to do now. He's going to test to see if he can move it. And as I said before, he doesn't want his mother to know because he knows he's got a plan now to knock these trees over, right? He knows that's his job, but he wants to do it carefully because he doesn't want to make any noise. So his idea is he's going to start sliding the mortar. Right? Now, I have to tell you something about these trees. As you've probably heard, these are called twin Arjuna trees. Sometimes in Sanskrit they're called Yamal or Yamala Arjuna trees. Yamala means twin. And Arjuna was the name of the trees, and Nalakovera Manigriva we're happy to be called the same name as Krishna's friend, Arjuna. Krishna has Arjuna, the charioteer, and another gopa called Arjuna. So they were called Arjuna trees, but Yamo means twin. And what, what is, what's a twin tree? It's the same root. They came from the same root. Isn't that interesting? Two trees coming out of the same root, and they were in an X shape like this. They crossed over like that. Right? So when... We hear the story that Krishna pulled the mortar between the trees. Well, they were crossed over like this. So when he pulled the mortar, it's two trees crossed over, right? So there's this X, looks something like this, I guess. <laughs> you get the picture. Two trees, how can I do this? Two trees crossed over, something like that. So Krishna's, you know, he's playing with a checking out the rope, you know. What happened was when Krishna started this pastime here, playing with the rope, beginning to drag the mortar, he empowered or gave his shakti to the rope and the mortar, and they became living entities. So now it's not just him moving it, but it's them moving themselves. So any noise. He doesn't want to do anything which would attract the attention of anyone because he's got to engage in this pastime. So he doesn't want to run into Mother Yasoda again with the stick. So what's going on here is there's two energies going on, his Leela Shakti and his Aishwarya Shakti. In his Leela Shakti, he's afraid of making noise because Mother Yasoda will hear him and he doesn't want to be punished. In his Aishvarya Shakti, he's empowered the mortar and the ropes and he's going to knock the tree down. So he's, he's got his God Shakti and he's got his Kid Shakti and they're kind of going in and out or simultaneously. I mean, it's happening at one time. We had talked about that before, right? Mm. So... Um, Okay. The rope and the mortar come alive. Um, his effulgence goes into the rope and mortar and they start to move on their own. And Krishna's thinking, what's going on here? I'm not even moving it. It's sliding on its own. It's, it's on its side now and it's sliding towards the trees. Hmm. Anyway, the mortar is working on its own, and 
So what happens is it's sliding, like here, here are the trees, the mortar's sliding this way, and then it turns this way. So now you have the trees like this, but the mortar's bigger, right? So the mortar comes in and it's catching the trees. Hmm. And Nalakumvera, Mani Griva, they've been waiting almost 20,000 years for this. And when that mortar touches them, they know, about, they know what's about to happen. So this is like really big highlight for them right now. Um, okay. Um, yeah. Hmm, okay. Jai, Prabhupada. Okay. Um, so, because Krishna empowered the mortar, the mortar knew what Krishna wanted and so forth. It, it just worked on its own to make it happen. Okay. Anyway, the coward boys, are, they're up on the hill, they're looking at this, and they're like, what? They didn't say, what the, is going on? They just said, what's going on? And it was like, he's tied to a mortar, he can't get free, it's in between the trees. It's like, how is he moving it? What's he doing? They're just like, to just, you know, being entertained, right? Mm. So, um, yeah. Now, the mortar comes up, the trees feel this pressure, this weight. And to them, it was like the weight of the universe against them. Mm. So, you know what happened, right? The mortars behind the trees. It's pulled and they fall down. But how do they fall? Because Krishna's right in the middle of them. So you know how they fell? They fell away from him. So they wouldn't hurt him. Because, you know, if you're ever around a tree that's falling, it's like, it's not safe. If a tree falls on you, then it could kill you. So the trees, they knew what was going on now, so they fell away. Now, something interesting happened when they fell. Two things. First, the trees cracked, and that made a sound. And then the trees fell, and that made a sound. The combined sound, loud, it was heard in Goloka. It was so, the sound of the tree cracking and falling was so loud, they heard it in Goloka. It was like this huge weapon, and like the demigods heard it, everybody heard it. It was so loud. And it was so loud, all the way in the spiritual world they heard it. It's pretty loud, right? Except the cowherd boys. The cowherd boys, they just went like that. And then, you know, they're so used to like Krishna doing amazing things and never like getting in, never getting um, into any kind of danger or always getting out of danger. That was like, for them, it was like, yeah, whatever. No problem. You know, they weren't really affected by it. Um, so, but naturally, if there's a three year old boy in a courtyard and two trees come down, and there's this huge sound like a brahmastra or some atomic weapon. If you're a friend, you want to run down and help, right? So the boys are like, they're getting up to run down to help Krishna because they thought, well, you know, he might be in danger. Danger, but he had this shock at them and they couldn't move. He didn't want them to come down yet. So like, uh, uh. 
they can't get out of their position. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Um, that was Yogamaya. Yogamaya immobilized them. Mm. Mm. So now after this happens, Krishna's just sitting there, right? The trees come down, and what's he doing? He's sitting on the ground. He's got the rope, and he's just going, playing with the rope, flicking the rope. Like, yeah, you know, big deal. Right? So, um, you know what happened then, all of a sudden. Now look at Veramani Griva come out. And when we last saw them, they were naked. But now they come out, and they're completely decorated with beautiful cloth and crowns and earrings and bangles and armlets and whatever else. Mm. And they are effulgent. So, what happened? So the first thing they did, I mean, not, they, they become purified. So the first thing they did is they bowed down. And it said here, they bowed down in such a way, their whole head was covered with dust. So this is like, you know, this is what they've been waiting for. Now they're seeing Krishna. And now they become qualified by Narada Muni's mercy. They're qualified to interact with Krishna. Not qualified to enter uh, his eternal lila because they went back to the heavenly planets, but at least now qualified to see Krishna become purified and then live out their duration of life as demigods, as devotees, or pure devotees. Mm. So now they're coming out, there they are, they're bowing down, and Krishna's just kind of playing with the mortar, like, you know, like, yeah, big deal, too, demigods, like that. Yeah. That's Krishna's position. So, um, they offered prayers. If you, there's a book called Gopal, Gopal Champu, and the prayers that they offered uh, are, are extensively described there. But one of the things that's so interesting is that you see in Bhagavatam, like Dhruva Maharaj, when he sees Krishna, or Prahlad Maharaj, when he's touched by Nishingade, they just, they just offer prayers. It doesn't matter that they're young boys. They just offer these amazing prayers. Or... Even the gopis, just the Bhagavatam is full of poetry, but it's the spontaneous offering of the prayers of devotees. And they offer these amazing prayers, you know, in perfect Sanskrit meter, and full of ornaments. So that's... When we see Krishna, we'll be able to do that also. And Prabhupada said poetry, he said devotee is a poet, because poet, poetry is born out of love. When you love someone, you write poetry. So now when you see Krishna, this love comes out. It's amazing things come out of you. Right? Like amazing love song, but it's not exactly a love song. So, um, so they were you know, offering prayers, so Krishna heard his name. Like when you hear your name, you take notice. So they said, oh, dear Krishna, this and that. So then Krishna, oh, you're talking to me. So then he stood up. So he's just go, Krishna's going along with it. Um, they said, uh, they're offering prayers that you're God, and Krishna's saying, what are you talking about? How do you know I'm God? And playing with them, right? Mm. So then, now look over Armani Griva, Krishna's playing with us, so we'll quote Shastra, explaining how you're God. And so they're going back and forth having this exchange. And then Krishna says, but you know, so many people have the name Krishna. So you say, Krishna is God, but why me? It's just like, you know, I'm not the only one. I'm not the only Krishna. So in this way he was playing. Um, then finally Krishna, he said, okay. Sure. So it kind of absolves me of my responsibility. So he's playing with Nala Kuvera like this, I said, you know, you're saying everything's happening because of me? You didn't, you didn't, it wasn't your fault that you ended up like this? 
So, you know, Krishna's clear. This, Krishna knows that this point of philosophy could be misunderstood, so he brings it up here because he wants to clarify it for all of us. Isn't that interesting? Because it is misunderstood. Sometimes, I don't say devotees blame Krishna, but they think that Krishna is responsible for their own mistakes. Like, you know, it was Krishna's mercy this happened. And, I, and sometimes I say, no, I don't think it was Krishna's mercy. I think you just made a mistake. I think you just were negligent or you just didn't know what to do and you did the wrong thing. And it wasn't Krishna's desire, it wasn't Krishna's will, it wasn't that Krishna does everything, just you made a mistake. And as, as obvious as that is, I don't see that often in our movement. I see that we tend to unconsciously think, well, it was all Krishna's mercy. It's a story I've told before, you may have heard. Some devotees were traveling to the Rathyatra festival in Los Angeles. And Prabhupada, they came to see Prabhupada. They had arrived late. And Prabhupada said, why are you late? And they said, it was Maya. We ran out of gas. You know, it's like Maya attacked us. <laughs> Maya attacked us and we ran out of gas. And Prabhupada said, don't blame your ignorance or don't blame your foolishness on Maya. You know, it's like, so it's either Krishna wants it or Maya sidetracked us. <laughs> Not me. Right? And so we have that tendency. I see it so often. It's a misunderstanding of the philosophy. Krishna is the doer. I'm not the doer. So how could it be my responsibility? You know, it was just yeah, it was just Maya. What happened? Uh, why didn't you come to the temple this morning? Ah, uh, Maya is just tricking me. You know, it's like, oh, it's Maya's fault. You, you know, like, I'm kind of innocent. It's just Maya, you know, sometimes she's strong. And, you know, what can you do? Maya is more powerful than us, so what can you do? So that's misunderstanding. So now Krishna's, he's, giving his philosophy here, he's saying, are you suggesting that you weren't responsible for your misdeeds? And Nala Kovera, he says, no, no, that's not what I mean. We are the immediate cause of our misdeeds because we misused our free will. But because you are time, the instigator of all actions, and because you are the creator, the ingredient with which action takes place, and because you are the controller the ultimate permitter of action, therefore we suggest that you are the remote cause. So they're making a distinction. All right. I'm the cause, I made the choice. You're the remote cause because without you, the time factor, the modes of nature, giving me free will and so forth, I couldn't make a mistake. So both things are true. Krishna's the cause, but just like if Krishna loves us, why does he let us come in the material world? Is it? Is it? Does he want that? No, we want that. But then he creates the prison because we want the prison. So is Krishna the cause of the prison of the material world? Yes. But we're the cause of him creating it because we want it. And if we don't want it, he won't create it. So he provides the facility. Yes? Or when there was demons in the spiritual world. What's that? Or when there was demons. Yeah. Either way. But you can, even if you were never in the spiritual world, you didn't have to come to the material world because you were marginal. So you didn't start here. So wherever, whatever the case may be, you decided to come here. And then Krishna provided it. Yeah, because, Pra because Prabhupada said most living entities don't decide to come. Most living entities don't come. That means we have choice. Wherever you think you fell from, you had a choice. From Leela, or from Brahman, or Mahatattva, or wherever you've been told you've come from, you still have a choice. You either can go to Krishna or go back. So most people chose to go to Krishna or stay with Krishna, depending how you look at it, and we chose not to. And so Krishna had to create a place for us to go. So Krishna is the cause of creating the material